Hello everybody and welcome to Zero Mile ADB, a beginner's guide to adventure motorcycling. Today we are in the garage because winter has officially sent in in Colorado and it's far too cold and windy to be shooting outside. So we are going to talk about the most common question that I have gotten since I've started this channel and that is, as a shorter rider, how do you manage such a big bike and is the Super Adventure S a good bike for shorter riders? So let's get into it. So if you're anything like me, you're five foot nine on a good day, maybe five foot nine and a half once you put on your riding boots and you have this fear because you're a brand new rider and how are you gonna control such a big bike? And there are a whole host of questions that come along with that until you actually start riding. And there are really only a few key areas that we need to think about as shorter riders because once the bike starts moving, really it doesn't matter how tall or big you are. So some of the concerns we need to think about as a shorter rider is when the bike comes to a stop and being able to manage and put our feet down. I've even talked to a couple of seasoned motorcycle riders who still want to be able to flat foot their bike and they've been riding for quite a while. Now knowing I wanted an adventure bike while I was at my motorcycle safety course, I knew it was gonna be important for me to be able to one foot the bike because having gotten some tips from other riders, I realized that one footing is kind of the only way to manage the bike because I'm not gonna be able to effectively flat foot it. So going back to my MSF course, I remember sitting down on the bike and one of our first tasks was to crab walk the bike across the parking lot using both feet. And I remember how terrible I was at that exercise and thinking in my head, there is no way I'm gonna be able to buy an adventure bike because I'm so terrified right now and I have both feet on the ground. How am I gonna manage with one foot? The good news is, is that as I continued to practice throughout the motorcycle safety course, I really focused on using just one foot as much as I could, knowing that if I dumped the bike, I had all the safety bars and everything, and I could easily put my other foot down because the bike we are using sat so low. And the more and more I practiced, the more and more I got comfortable. And actually when I took the final test, I only used one foot. I never two footed the bike. And I'm really excited to say that it made a huge difference in being able to prepare for a big adventure bike. The second thing is, is the potential of dropping or rolling the bike over and being able to pick it up. Now, I a couple of things with that. I have the roll bars through the crash bars and I also have aluminum panniers on it. Now, a lot of people will say the aluminum panniers are dangerous because if the bike falls, it could break your leg, etc. I don't know too much about that, but I can say that they have saved me on the couple of times that I have laid the bike over, luckily not while moving, all in parking lots and it has made it far easier for me to pick the bike up because especially with these SW Motec bags, they have little rubber pieces or square impact pieces on the sides. So when it hits the concrete, it keeps the bike at an angle as opposed to flat. And if the bike's at an angle, it's gonna be a lot easier to push back over. And once you get up to that balance point, um, one thing I practiced is being able to walk around the bike and keeping the bike balanced and understanding where that balance point is. If you have a bike like the S, Super Adventure S with some crash bars on the side or maybe some aluminum panniers, having a bike that doesn't go all the way flat makes it a lot easier to pull back up. The next thing is, is that I chose a bike that had a 19 inch front wheel. So most adventure bikes come with a 21 inch front wheel, which Think about it, like if you take a Jeep and you put bigger tires on it, what happens? The Jeep raises up, it gives us ground clearance, which is great if you're six foot and you can handle a big bike, but when you're short like me, it can get way too high and you're like, I can't even one foot this bike without getting off. Um, an example was, as I was looking at the Tiger 1200 Adventure and that has a 21 inch front wheel. And when I sat on that bike, I felt I was being skyrocketed into space and it was just so high off the ground. Before I had finished my course, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get an adventure bike. These things are way too tall. Then comes along the Super Adventure S. And this bike with the 19 inch front wheel, keeps the bike a little bit lower and is a lot easier for me to handle and much easier for me to flat foot with one foot. Now the other nice thing is, is like if you look at the BMW 1250 GS also comes with a 19 inch front wheel and you can get a suspension lowering kit. So if you're even shorter, 
you can make it a lot easier to manage. The only thing there is you're lowering the suspension, so you're actually losing some suspension travel. If you're like me and you don't plan on doing a lot of heavy off-road traveling, especially with your first bike, probably not a big deal if you lower the suspension. But if you are looking to do a lot of off-roading, uh, more technical trails, you might want to look at you know the standard 1250 and just get used to the bigger bike. Another thing, and probably the most common, is just getting a lower seat. So you can get lower seats. With this one, it's only 10 millimeters, so you get maybe about half an inch that the seat lowers, but it is also a little bit narrower, so it does help you. And that's the nice thing about the new 1250 GS. If you have an older version that's older than the 21 model, the newer ones actually have a, wide, a narrow, more narrow tank area. So it's easier for you to stand over. So the wider your legs go, the taller the bike feels because you're not able to stand with your legs kind of straight, if that makes sense. So this bike actually has a narrower seat area, making it also easier for a shorter rider. The last thing and one of the benefits with the KTM 1290 Super Adventure S is it has electronic suspension and it has a preload. So to start, I kept the preload at zero, meaning that the rear of the bike was as low as possible. And so this also made it super easy for me to flat foot one footed. And since I had practiced with that, I had no problems at all. And now that I've gotten a little bit better and I've added the bags and added a little bit of weight, I actually run it at a 20% preload, even though there's a whole lot of weight in there so that um, the bike will sit a bit more level and handle better on the road. But because I was able to start with it at zero and through my first few thousand miles, I've gotten really comfortable with the bike and now I can raise it up and handle it no problem. I even actually rode with it at 40 or 50% preload just to see what it was like to ride a taller bike and actually it was super manageable. Could still easily one foot the left foot, no problems at stoplights or anything like that. One other thing that's a big advantage of the KTM 1290 Super Venture S is the lower center of gravity. This bike, the fuel tanks are on the side as opposed to the top. So when I looked at bikes like the Ducati or the Tiger 1200, all of that gas weight is at the top and makes the bike a lot more top heavy. So when you are going a lot slower and you're a shorter rider, that fear of dumping the bike and having to pick it up becomes a lot more because it's a lot more weight to leverage up off the ground to get the bike vertical. And so with a lower center of gravity, this bike is super. I feel more comfortable on this bike doing figure eights than I did on my little student bike uh, that was only a 500 and much smaller than this. This bike has such a great balance that it is super easy to use. And then I would also practice that I also saw where you learn the balance point of your bike. So practice walking around the bike uh, with one hand on the bike, kind of keeping it upright and seeing if you can kind of walk around the bike while it stays balanced. This just really helps you to understand the balance of the bike and will make it much easier to handle. And as a shorter rider, makes a big bike just a lot less intimidating. So that's really it. So to kind of recap, just a couple of things. I would say practice one footing. If you can one foot, you'll be totally fine. Number two, look for an adventure bike with a 19 inch front wheel as opposed to a 21. It will just help keep the bike a little bit lower. There are some models where you can also lower the suspension to help you if you're really if you're a lot shorter like maybe 5.5 five, or maybe even shorter look for a bike with a good lower center of weight uh, where the weight of the bike is lower which will make it easier to pick up consider getting like hard case panniers like i did and roll bars for the side so that if the bike does fall over if you do lay it over in a parking lot it's not all the way on its side it leaves that at an angle makes it much easier to pick back up i've Unfortunately, I have rolled my, laid my bike down I think three times now, and none of those times has it been hard to pick up uh, because of the roll bars and the panniers. And the panniers have held up really well, not a lot of dents or anything. I can't say that if you drop it, like if you drop at speed, there's probably gonna be some accidents, but if you do like me in the parking lot, the slow roll, it's super easy to pick up. The next thing is, is if you have a suspension, adjust that preload down so it gets that bike as low as possible until you can get comfortable with it. And then you can slowly raise it up to challenge yourself. So if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell every time a new video comes out. Until next time, stay safe out there.